Yes, thank you very much. I have a question for Daniela Aust. Um, the distinction between pancreatobiliary and intestinal type of artery carcinoma, do you always uh, make immunohistochemistry or is it sometimes uh, very clear just from the histomorphological aspect? And I also wanted to ask you, is there an interobserver variability and uh, could, you, could you make it clear how, how certain the diagnosis is when we get it? Yeah. Um, thanks for that question. So, actually, in, in our institution, we always use the four markers that I have given you. We, we decide on histomorphology, and some cases are very okay. clear-cut um, intestinal type because you can see the goblet cells. Um, but then um, there are also, and I have not alluded to that at all, there, there are mixed types, right? It's, it's not as clear-cut as, as I as I told you, but I, but I didn't want to add any more complexity to, to something that is already very complex. So yes, we, we, we do that um, routinely, even though, um, as you could see from the, um, from the papers that, that I gave you, that the histomorphology is, is already very good. It doesn't get any better um, with, with immunohistochemistry or any surer but um, we still like to have that certainty. How, how do you do that in Düsseldorf? Also, oh, yeah. immunistic chemistry. Yeah. So can I also ask um, all of you as pathologists, um, as we have just seen the, the large numbers of adenos, um, 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 adenomas, um, can we also separate them histologically in, in the different subtypes or not? Well, Almost all of the adenomas that, that I have ever seen are intestinal type. And uh, sorry, Florian, I think the sec I, I did not answer the second part of your question. Yeah, how, well, how big is the inter-observer variability? I, I have not, when I prepared for that talk, I have not seen any, any papers um, on that. But... Um, I think if it's clear cut, there's not much of inter observer variability. But, that, but as I said, there are mixed types. Do you have any any uh, numbers on inter observer variability? No, I also don't have no. any numbers. But as you said, there are also mixed types. So it's not that you can always make the yeah. uh, diagnosis like with other entities, IPMN. Also, there are mixed types. So uh, I still have another. Uh, related question, as, as a medical oncologist, I still have a problem with the resected ampulla of artery carcinomas. You clearly showed that if it's intestinal type, they have a better prognosis. If it's mm. pancreatobiliary type, they have a worse prognosis. And you can, it, you can make it relatively clear uh, by histopathological diagnosis. Uh, Pierre can also add some mutations which uh, may make it even clearer, KRAS mutations and so on. So what to do uh, with an N plus resected, T3 N plus resected ampulla fatary carcinoma if it's pancreatobiliary subtype? John Bridgewater showed us these small numbers mm -hmm. today from SPAC 3, 30, 30, 30 patients that there may be no effect from adjuvant chemotherapy. On the other side, when I get the information on artery belonging to the, to the pancreatobiliary subtype, I have a trend to give adjuvant gemcitabine. Mm -hmm. Is there any opinion from the panel? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I actually, I, I would do the same thing, uh, especially since, you know, in a T3 tumor, you're, I, that does belong to the 25% where, where distinction is not that clear, right? We don't, we know the, the subtype, which is pancreatic biliary, but that can also be a pancreatic cancer growing into the duodenal wall and into the, the ampulla. I, I think there, there is quite some uncertainty in those locally advanced cases. Yes, if I just can ask one question, I would like also to ask you, how do you decide in these cases, uh, well, or how do you proceed? Well, uh, actually, um, macroscopy is, is the key here. You, you, can't really do, um, you, you can't really do it histologically, so you have to look, you know, if there's any uncertainty, I go down 
uh, to the laboratory and, and, and look at the specimen myself and if, if the tumor really is in the ampulla, in the duodenal wall, then that is an additional you know, argument for that it actually arises from there. But, and the other argument um, that I sometimes use is the, the, the presence of, of um, intraepithelial neoplasia. But then I also said that there is, um, there is a field cancerization and I've seen cases with, with an ampullary adenoma which is, a, is, is intestinal type and an invasive carcinoma which is pancreatobiliary. So how does that belong to one another? We have two other questions. There's one in the back. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, that was three very good talks. Uh, my question is, because we see that it's a very difficult diagnosis and that the sampling can be also uh, misleading at some point, do you see any rooms for liquid biopsy uh, with this type of diagnosis, which would be a more like an admixture uh, than a, just a sampling? Well, liquid biopsy doesn't help you with the distinction between Invasive or not, <laughs> and it doesn't really help you with the distinction between intestinal and pancreatobiliary type, no, right? Not, not really. I, I think maybe there is some different signature in terms of gene expression, but there is no real uh, study on, on that matter to be able to distinguish these two types of, of tumors. And in, from a mutation point of view, there is no specificity at each individual mutation, mm -hmm. so it's very difficult based on the characterization of circulating tumor DNA, for example, if there is any difference between the two types. And maybe it's, we can imagine maybe to have something around uh, my, um, uh, microRNA, uh, different expression in terms of microRNA between the two types, but there is no data in the literature at that stage. Okay, fact, last question. It, it's tr try to link the endoscopy talk to Pierre a little bit. I mean, FAP is not that uncommon if you look at adenoma of the papilla. Mm -hmm. Can you help us to differentiate? Because, I mean, that's treated differently. Uh, I mean, the penetrance, you know, if you do a colonoscopy I, I, only, it's not always a lot of polyps, right? It might be something in between, and we don't know it exactly. Uh, Maybe Thierry have, have uh, more answer than me, but the, it's, it's very rare to diagnose uh, FFP from, uh, from at, the, at the stage of uh, polyps in the duodenum, in fact. So you have always a, the, the diagnostic of FAP. Mm. It, it's, yes. it, it's a very cases that you diagnose a FAP from a body. Uh, I don't remember the maker diagnosis uh, just by endoscopy, in fact, by, by endoscopy, the endoscopy. The diagnosis is, is, is known before. Mm. I don't remember. It, it's more sort of the idea you have sort of a 70-year-old woman, but, you know, that's not FAP anymore, probably, and you do it a colonoscopy, you find five or ten polyps, and you don't know exactly if that's something, you know, which is genetically predominant, but, right but the, the, sort of the, the, attenuated the is, F or, yes, FAP or something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know. The fact is, is, I don't know why exactly, but we treat differently patients with FAP and patients with sporadic adenoma. Mm -hmm. yeah. We treat them differently, but basically there is no, no evidence. No, so as you know, all sporadic adenoma we reject, but we, we don't reject all, uh, all adenomatous ampulla in case of FAP, because they are all adenomatous. Yeah, we, you, if you perform biopsy, you always find adenoma. Mm -hmm. So we only treat patients with high-grade dysplasia, mm -hmm. and, and or if the ampulla is, is quite large, so in this case we can suspect uh, uh, um, an evolution or different evolution within, within, the, within the ampulla itself. So that's why we reject. So, okay. So probably we do this to avoid another treatment in a patient who already had a colectomy, etc. So we need, to, we want to reduce the number of treatment. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have, yes. Yeah. I have a question to the pathologist concerning the adenoma, because there is no clear rule in, I think, uh, among pathologists about the fact that 
an analysis of uh, adenomas needs a second reading. Of course, valid esophagus, yes. Uh, but, uh, and, but adenoma, there is no rules. But nevertheless, as in this series, we observe a lot of false positive. And we receive, uh, I, don't, I don't know the number, but we receive frequently patients with a diagnosis of adenoma. And I, ne I never trust the diagnosis of adenomas. I, want, I, I first asked for the slides. Mm -hmm. Then I ask for, for my pathologist to perform a second reading. And then, if a second reading is positive, the patient comes. But in, very frequently, the, the, the first pathologist is wrong. But it's not. It's just by, well, by lack of experience, probably. And probably because this is a very difficult pathology to analyze or yeah. on, on, on the serology. Well, the, the, the difficulty is um, quite similar to the difficulty that we observe in, in Barrett's esophagus and also in ulcerative colitis. You have, um, first of all, you know, the papilla in itself is polypoid, yes. right? Yes. First, first of all. And then you always have um, some inflammation mm -hmm they're going on with regenerative changes. And, and as you know, the, the inter-observer variability in pathologists is, is highest, no matter what, um, what, what organ you're talking about, is, is highest between regenerative changes and low-grade dysplasia in, 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 in the presence of, of, um, of inflammation. And so, yes, if you, if you don't trust the, the, the first pathologist, then, then let's, let, let a second pathologist look at that. That was my last slide, you know. This is, um, these, um, these diagnoses are usually seen in our institution by at least two, two people because there is inter-observer variability, not because we're not good pathologists, but because the diagnosis is it's actually difficult. very difficult. Mm -hmm. And I can tell from my institution that frozen sections <laughs> from the biliary tract are the most hated frozen sections <laughs> because it's so difficult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, if there are no other questions, thank you very much for this excellent session. And before I... Um, 